Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Test Studio, and today I'm gonna share with you how to create that glitch logo intro in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve, we're now on the edit page, and we're gonna start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline. Now we can go over to Fusion, once in Fusion, the first thing I want to do is bringing here a background to set our canvas. I'm going to bring the alpha channel down to zero and I'm going to bring a second background to set our actual background. Then I'm simply going to merge the two together by linking the first background to the second one. And then I'm going to link the output of the merge to the media out. Then I'm going to select my background too. And here I'm going to choose a color that is not exactly black, which is going to go more towards the gray like that. The next thing you want to do is bring your logo. So here I'm just going to go to my finder and drag my PNG logo in my working area. Then I'm going to link the output of that PNG to my background one. Then here I'm just going to make some space between the media and the merge. And I'm going to select my media in it shift space on my keyboard and I'm going to search for a transform node bring that in we're not going to use it right now but that's what we're going to use later down the line if we want to adjust the size of our logo right now i'm just going to reset it to default the first thing we're going to be animating is going to be just the logo coming in the screen to do that we're going to use a transform and a brightness node that we're going to use to create an opacity animation so first off i'm going to select my merge tool it shift space on my keyboard and here i'm going to bring a transform so we're gonna go to frame 30 and then we're gonna decide on the final size for our logo. So in my case, I'm gonna go with about 0.8, seems about right. I'm just gonna drop a keyframe here at frame 30. And then I'm gonna go to frame zero and we're gonna increase the size until the logo is just filling up the screen like so. And now we have our logo just coming into frame. Now we're gonna smooth that up by going over to the spline editor. I'm gonna select here my transform click zoom to fit, select my two point, hit S on our keyboard, then hit T to bring the easy in and ease out and then bring the easy in at about 85. Now we've got something that is smoother. We're just gonna do an opacity animation to make it less harsh when it's just entering the frame. So it just doesn't fill the frame right away. I'm gonna select my transform two, it's shift space on my keyboard, bring a brightness node then here I'm gonna activate the alpha channel. I'm gonna go to frame 10. I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the gain at one. And then I'm gonna go to frame zero and I'm gonna bring the gain down to zero. And now we have our base animation. Now we're gonna create our glitch effect on top of that. I'm gonna close my spline editor and go back here to my working area. Then here, then I'm gonna bring a rectangle in my working area. And we're basically gonna connect multiple rectangle masks together to create our pattern to create that glitch effect. So here, first off, I'm just gonna reduce a bit the width and the height, just to make it a box like that, for example. And then I'm gonna right click on the center, go to modify width, and here I'm just gonna select shake. It prompt open here the modifier. And now as you can see, it just create a shake on the rectangle, but it's too smooth. We're gonna reduce completely that smoothness. And now that box is just jumping around the screen. And that's gonna be the base of our glitch effect. We're just gonna multiply that by creating multiple rectangle and then using a duplicate node to again replicate that multiple time. And then we're just gonna fit that onto our logo and that's gonna just displace it. So right now let's just create five rectangular mask with different shape. So here I'm just gonna copy that first one and then I'm gonna paste it directly after it and it will still be connected with the blue arrow. And then here on that second one, I just want to make some modification to the shape. So here, I'm just gonna bring that second one to the viewer. Here, as you can see, I'm just gonna create a smaller one. It's in the same position. So one important thing is that you want to go back to the modifier and here you want to click reseed. It will basically here change the pattern of movement. And as you can see, those two are not moving in the same place, but they have a different pattern of animation. So now I'm just gonna do that three more times by copying it and then pasting it. And now we're just gonna do the same thing here, going, reseeding the position, and then we're just going to bring that to the viewer and change the aspect of the shape. You want to create different type of shapes so you have some diversity in your pattern. Now I'm just going to do that two more time. Now, as you can see, if we play it, we got a pattern going on. We're going to increase that pattern here with duplicate. So I'm going to hit shift space on my keyboard and bring a duplicate node and bring that in. Then I'm going to hit still shift space on my keyboard. I'm going to search for a displacement node and bring that in. 
I'm gonna hold shift and drag my displays here between the transform and the merge to connect it. Then I'm gonna connect the rectangle output to my duplicate yellow arrow and then I'm gonna connect my duplicate to my displace node. And now if we switch the view to all media out, as you can see, that's affecting our logo right there. Now, as mentioned, we're gonna increase that with the duplicate. So here I'm gonna go to the duplicate and bring it to the screen. And as you can see, we already have two copy. I'm simply gonna move the center position just so we're duplicating what we've just done. And now I'm gonna create a time offset by increasing the time offset just so it's not in sync. And now we have this pattern going on. Now I'm gonna bring back my media out to the viewer. And here, as you can see, if we go to the displays, we can start to add some refraction by going to X and Y. And then here we can just adjust the X refraction and the Y refraction to create more uh, displacement and increase that glitch effect. We're gonna animate that in a second, but right now I'm just gonna double click on it to reset it. Here I'm gonna select my transform, my brightness, background, merge, and media out. Just bring them aside to make some space. I'm gonna select my merge. I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm gonna search for a dissolve node and bring that in. And then here we're gonna connect the output of the transform to the green arrow of the dissolve. And basically the dissolve gonna allow us to switch between the version of the logo that isn't glitch and the version of the logo that is glitch. So if I go back here to my displays and increase the refraction again, and then I'm going to my dissolve, as you can see, if I'm switching that slider, we're switching between the two versions, the logo that is intact and the logo that is glitched. So we're gonna go at frame five, and then here we're gonna drop a keyframe on the background foreground at one. Then we're gonna go one frame forward to frame six, and we're gonna just drag that down to zero. And then here we're gonna move two frame forward to frame eight, drop a keyframe on the background foreground at zero, and then move forward one frame, and bring back the background foreground at one. And basically to create that very quick animation that switch from the logo that is glitch to the logo that isn't glitch. So right now we're gonna go over to the spline editor and we're gonna just copy and paste those keyframe multiple times. So here I'm gonna click zoom to fit. A quick tip to make sure you're seeing only those keyframe is that you can go here to menu and select show only selected tool. That way the only keyframe that will show up are the one uh, that have been selected here when you select the node. So here we're gonna click zoom to fit. I'm gonna select all all point and then we're just gonna copy them by hitting command C. We're gonna move a few frame forward to frame 14 and then we're just gonna click on our spline editor to select it and we're gonna do command V to paste it. Now we're gonna do that a third time by going to frame 25. Here, same thing, selecting our spline editor and command V to paste it. And now we can just play it and see how it looks. If we're not happy with the timing, we can just click zoom to fit. And then here we can just move around our keyframe. So for example, here in my case, I would like to have the second glitch appearing a tiny bit quicker. So I'm going to select my point here that constitute the glitch. They're basically creating that V shape. And then I'm going to just select one point, hold shift on my keyboard so we don't change the values and bring that a bit forward. And now basically, as you can see, I'm bringing back the animation to frame 12 instead of frame 14. So you can adjust the timing of the animation that way. I'm gonna do the same thing here with the first one by selecting all my point, holding shift, and then dragging that maybe one or two frame backward. If we play it, you can see that the glitch is very similar from the first one to the second one uh, to the third one. But if we wanted to adjust that animation to be stronger, for example, for the two first glitches and then to be lighter on the last one, we can adjust that by going here to the displace node and then by adjusting the Y refraction and X refraction and bring them closer to zero, the effect will be less pronounced. And if we increase them to one or minus one, it will be more pronounced. So in my case, I want to set them manually. So here I'm gonna go to my dissolve and as you can see, the peak of my glitch here are gonna be at frame five, then the next one are gonna be at frame 14 and the last one are gonna be at frame 27. So here I simply need to go to the displace and drop a keyframe on the X refraction and Y refraction uh, at whatever value I want to have at those peak. So here I'm gonna go at frame five. I'm gonna bring the Y refraction here to the minimum, drop a keyframe on it, and then I'm gonna increase the X refraction to the maximum and drop a keyframe on it. 
then I'm gonna go to frame 14 and I'm gonna do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna bring the Y refraction to the maximum and I'm gonna bring the X refraction to the minimum. And then I'm gonna go to frame 27. And for the last one, I want something that is a bit lighter. So I'm gonna bring the X refraction closer to zero and I'm gonna do the same with the Y refraction. Now we have the core of our glitch effect. We're just gonna stylize that by creating a RGB split effect. So I'm gonna close my spline editor and then here I'm gonna just select everything and drag that up just to make some space. The first thing I want to bring here is a bitmap. So I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm gonna search for the bitmap node and bring that in. I'm gonna link the output of the displays to the yellow arrow of the bitmap. Similar to what we've done here with the rectangle, we're basically just pulling out only the black and white data of the logo being displaced. And that's what we're gonna use to then create a red shape and a cyan shape to create our RGB split. So then here I'm gonna bring a first background and I'm gonna switch the color here to cyan. And then here I'm gonna bring a second background and I'm gonna switch the color to red. Now I'm gonna link the output of that bitmap to the first background and to the second background. And as you can see now, we have basically a red shape and a cyan shape. Now I'm gonna displace those two. So I'm gonna hit the sheet space on my keyboard and I'm gonna search for a transform node and bring that in. Then here I'm gonna link the output of my background three to that transform and link the output of that transform to my background one right there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing here for the red shape. So I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard, bring the transform node, make sure that it's connected to the transform and then link the output of that transform to the merge. Then here I'm gonna bring the media out to the viewer and then here go to a spot where there is the glitch happening and we're gonna simply displace the cyan as much as we want. So here I'm just gonna go a tiny bit like this and I'm gonna do the same thing here for the red. I'm gonna go to the transform and I'm gonna displace it this time to the bottom. And as you can see that RGB split is happening only when the glitch is happening because it's right before the dissolve. So it's only when the glitch is in the screen that we have the RGB split, otherwise it's not there. Now, the last thing that I would like to add to that RGB split is gonna be a glow, but for this one, I thought I would just do something a tiny bit different and use instead the aperture diffraction. So I'm gonna select here my merge. If you want to use a glow, just hit shift space and search for the glow. And then it's just business as usual. You know, it's just like a simple glow nothing uh, crazy about it but uh, there is a cool effect that we could use by hitting shift space again and searching for aperture diffraction right now the effect is very very pronounced and it's clipping the edges but here by playing a bit with the parameter we can create some interesting looks so i'm gonna first reduce the overall scale so it doesn't clip on the edges right there so i'm gonna reduce that by quite a lot and i'm gonna reduce the aperture size by a little bit and increase the blade curvature a little bit as well. I just think that it created an effect a bit different than the regular glow by having those shiny ray of light that going all around on the logo. Now I'm simply gonna add some text under the logo. So I'm gonna bring a text node, link it here to the output of the brightness and contrast node. We're gonna write DaVinci. I'm gonna select the font pop in. I'm gonna drag it down, reduce the size, increase the tracking, I just size a bit more down like that. And then I'm gonna right click on the text box, select follower and go to the modifier right there. Then here in timing, we're gonna switch the order to random, but one by one. And we're gonna put two for delay. Then I'm gonna go over to the shading. And basically when my glitch animation is done, so about right there at frame 30, I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the opacity here at zero. And then we're gonna move three or four frames forward and drop a keyframe on the opacity at one. Now, here's the final result. Now, the cool thing is that you can feed it to that composition any logo that you want. So for example, here, we could replace it with the logo for Video Studio. I'm just gonna delete that. I'm gonna go over to my finder and get my logo. 
bring that in and then connect it to the transform. Now we can just resize it properly with the transform. That was the purpose of it from the beginning. And we can just adjust that here, go and adjust the text, switch that for tutorial, for example. And now we've very easily replaced that logo. It will work also with text. So you could just delete that, uh, delete the other text that we've created. And then here you can just drag whatever text you want link it to the transform right for example here davinci i'm going to increase the overall size i'm going to change the font to pop in again and now if we play it same thing we've created that text glitch animation and that's pretty much it hope this video was helpful please don't forget to like and subscribe let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next and see you in the next one bye Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transitions, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.